I'm Nikki Marino, the Chief Environmental Scientist at Fowler Davis & Associates. We're a small civil engineering firm in Tampa, and we do a lot of work with the Department of Transportation. And today we're gonna to be talking about seagrass here in Tampa Bay, and specifically one particular project, which is the Howard Franklin Causeway rock groins. So seagrass has always been an important habitat type in Tampa Bay. Back in the 1930s, it's estimated that there was about 70,000 acres that was covered by seagrass. And over time, with people moving in and the urbanization, that has dropped. We have been wanting to recreate and enhance this habitat for a lot of different reasons, not just water quality, but also for the fisheries. So here we are on site at the Howard Franklin Rock Groins Project. We're on the southeast side, on the Tampa side. And Nikki's here to explain a little bit more about the specifics of the project construction. This idea was developed to put these rock groins out that you see behind us and to try to use those as a wave break and calm the water behind it. And we call them groins. They're really just essentially um, a, a specifically designed rock pile using limestone rubble. So around 2008, we decided to try to come up with a project to help stop that sediment transport that we were noticing along the south side of the causeway. And one of the techniques to do that is to put rock groins out there or breakwaters, and the piles of the rocks will break up the waves as they get closer to the shore, and that will allow the sediments to stop transferring and shifting all over the place become more solid and then the seagrasses can establish. So if we're going to take a closer look at the plans, you can see that the riprap was actually placed in a zigzag pattern. Every other one sticks out of the water while the middle ones there, they're going to be completely submerged all the time. And there's a total of 13. It's about 2,000 linear feet in total. And the idea was to just place it in a way that, again, that the waves that are typically coming from the Southwest here in Tampa Bay are gonna end up crashing on these rocks rather than onto the, the seawall. So the project's been completed for about 15 years now. Do you think it's been successful? I do think so. I mean, you can measure success in a number of different ways. The more telling ones is looking at how much area behind the breakwaters has actually revegetated with seagrass and doing aerial delineation off of aerial maps, we estimate that there's about five and a half acres of seagrass habitat that has been added back into Tampa Bay because of this project. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of habitat. Sounds like a good place to go fishing. Absolutely. <laughs> about a year ago, when Salt Strong Alliance started up, the Tampa chapter wanted to do signature projects for conservation. So we thought about doing some habitat creation projects and using my background working with the Florida Department of Transportation, we thought, wouldn't that be a great idea to put some of these clean water habitat creation projects within their right of way, which would also enhance the fisheries within Tampa Bay. At Salt Strong, conservation is very important. Since the inception of the chapters two years ago, we realized that we needed to do more. And that's why I'm so excited to partner with Darlene and Salt Strong Alliance to get more projects out there for our members and everybody that wants to see cleaner waters and help in conservation. So over the last 15 years, we've learned a lot about resiliency and habitat creation. And uh, what else do you see that we've learned? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, in the last 15 years, we've really, really put an emphasis on having resilient coastlines. And the two hurricanes really battered the roads. But this rock groin area here wasn't really that affected by the storms themselves. All, of, all the rock groins are where they're supposed to be. And they did a really good job of protecting the habitat behind the rock groins in the breakwater area. So the, the rock groins have done some, you know, protection of the shoreline and the habitat that's behind it. So the Howard Franklin rock groin project happened about 14 years ago now. So this project has been in the ground and we have seen a lot of seagrass growth behind the rock groins, which is fantastic. And Darlene Schumann and I were just discussing, you know, what a great habitat enhancement that was, not only for Tampa Bay as a whole, but also for fisheries and for all of the Salt Strong members and everyone else that enjoys the, the good fishing that's happened around there. Over the past year, we've participated in projects like the Redfish Release with CCA and the Oyster Catcher Mat production workshops and also community events such as Cast for Kids with Salt Strong. These projects are amazing, but one of the things I can't wait to tackle with Salt Strong Alliance are similar projects like the Howard Franklin Rock Groins Project. 
So we've identified 18 projects that we're gonna start working on in 2025 with the Florida Department of Transportation. And that's gonna be Nikki and I as a team working on those. We have a proven track record to show that these projects can be successful and we have the team to deliver them. If you're not a member of the Salt Strong Fishing Club, there's no better time than now. With over 60,000 members, we are the largest fishing club in the world. So get out there, help your community, meet like-minded anglers, learn how to become a better angler, and become a Salt Strong Insider today. So if you want to be involved and learn more about the projects that are going on, check out saltstrongalliance.com or their social media pages. And even if you're not a member, we want you to come out, learn about the habitat of Tampa Bay, the fisheries, the opportunities that are out here, and all of the enhancement things that are happening to make the water better for everybody.